Bulldog Gardeners. It's Miss Sarah. I'm here in the school garden. I'm so excited to start the year off doing distance learning with you all. We have a different way we're going to get you the garden lessons this year. We are going to shoot videos for you about every two weeks and we will send those with the accompanying worksheets and assignments for you to do at home. If you'd like to, you can go ahead and get your garden map. To start off our very first garden lesson, I'd love to give you a virtual tour and let you see how everything has been doing since we were last together. Our garden looks wonderful right now for the height of summer. So we're right here by our first bed. Um, in this bed, I've got eggplants and peppers. One great thing about these peppers, you guys might remember our pizza garden project last year. For our pizza garden project, remember we all planted seeds together that were different things for the ingredients to make a pizza. Last winter, everybody planted or sowed their seeds inside in February. And then we watched our baby plants sprout or germinate in the trays inside in the lobby. Then we moved our baby plants out to the garden or transplanted them in April. They've been growing out here late spring and summer and we have begun to harvest or gather our crops in in July. So this is an example of the peppers that our first and second graders started last year with the pizza project. So good job guys. Excellent job, first and second grade. Now let me take you over towards bed number two. In bed number two, we have cucumbers here at the front part. If you'll notice, we have a special structure you might remember is called a trellis. So we have supporting structures or technology for some of our vining warm weather crops like cucumbers. Here sharing the cucumber bed, we've got some wonderful okra plants, which are great for the hot part of the summer here in Oklahoma. So we're having a wonderful okra harvest right now. Let's take you over toward bed number three. Bed number three, we've got some tomatoes that we put in just a little later because this is where, if you'll remember, we had our garlic coming through the winter. We harvested this over the summer in June. So when we took our garlic out, we've changed this over to a later tomato bed in bed number three. Then bed number four here, is our melon patch. We have cantaloupe and watermelon and we have already been harvesting I would say six or seven melons so our melon patch is doing fantastic. In the back you'll see a line of sunflowers. Those are actually edible sunflower seeds that we just harvested. So we have a ton of sunflower seeds that we grew right here in the garden. That's a great summer crop. Let's go over toward the other side of our garden. Let's go past our shade structure where we learn. Our strawberries are doing great, you all. Strawberry patch is doing fine. Here, I've got another of our pizza garden crops. This whole bed almost of bed number five is filled with tomatoes. Last year, the kindergarten planted tomatoes. So if you are in first grade this year, these are the tomatoes that you all planted and they have just done amazing. Great job on your contribution to the pizza garden. Also sharing this bed is a lovely variety of basil. 
basil is the herb for our pizza sauce. And that was planted last year by our third graders. Smells fantastic. Then coming down the hillside here, I've got onions. These were planted by our fourth graders. They're on to middle school now, but they've left us the gift of their onions. They did great on their part of the pizza garden project as well. Then we've got another vining plant that looks really similar to the cucumbers. It's our gourd patch. And if you can see this, it is growing all the way up the trees up the sunflowers and over the back towards a trellis that I'll show you around the back side. So our gourds are doing fantastic. Here's our three sisters bed, you all. It's doing really well. Remember our three sisters is our native planting style. We have our tall corn stalks in the middle. Then we have our beans, our vining beans grow around the corn. The corn is its trellis. And then we're filled in all in the bottom with squash. Let's go ahead and check out our pollination area and we'll go up our nice little path up the hillway. Pollination area is doing great, guys. Remember, we like to plant for vegetables and fruits, but we also like to keep certain spaces in our garden for our pollinator friends, our bees and our butterflies. We've seen a ton of pollination activity. So let's go up our little pathway up towards the top. Here's our container garden area. We've got some lettuce and some decorative flowers, some nice herbs and kind of a sensory garden. Check out our asparagus patch in the back, guys. It's doing awesome. It stays all season and keeps coming back just like our strawberries do. Okay, let's go down the sidewalk and check out everything from the top to finish up. This is some great areas for our pollinator friends also. Okay, here's the back of our gourds. Remember they were climbing up over the sunflowers and here they've got a trellis here in the back. If you'll notice, there's something special about gourd plants. These were also on our cucumbers. This is an example of a tendril. A tendril is a thread-like appendage that comes off of a vining plant. Then it tries to find a trellis to support itself, and it curls in a spiral, circular fashion to provide strength and structure to the plant as it's growing. This is a great example of some tendrils doing some work here on our trellis. Your garden is just doing absolutely fantastic. Everything we have growing now that you just saw is in season. Remember, it's the height of the warm season. So every vegetable that you saw is what we should be harvesting and eating at the peak of its season right now. It's in season. Thanks for coming on the tour of the garden, Bulldog Gardeners. I hope you can imagine what it looks like and we can't wait to see you and we can spend time together in the garden again. Hi, Bulldog Gardeners. I hope you enjoyed the tour, the virtual tour of the garden and you can visualize what has been growing in your school garden all summer sitting here at our shade structure where we do a lot of our outdoor lessons. So it's the perfect time for us to talk about the concepts we need to learn this week. We are talking about weather and climate. Did you know that weather and climate are actually two very different concepts? Weather is what is happening that day. 
It is a short-term change. It might be rainy or sunny or windy that day. And you can think about this as, how would I dress for that day? How would I dress for the weather? Now, when we talk about climate, we're talking about the pattern of weather over a period of time in your region or where you live. So the pattern of the climate, you can think about, it might be like, what clothes do I need in my closet all year? You might need shirts and tank tops and shorts, or you might need jeans and sweaters. And that is because the climate in Oklahoma, as we know, is warm in the summer and it is cooler in the winter. And remember, we have two categories of plants. I hope you remember from last year that are our warm season or our cool season. Our plants choose the climate that they grow in as well. This year, we are going to introduce a graph to you. We will use this throughout our program. This is a graph of central Oklahoma's climate. And as you can see on the lines, here is our cool season when the temperatures are cooler. And here is our warm season in the middle. This graph tracks the pattern of temperature or the climate for Oklahoma for the entire year. So it's a great reference for us. This year, we're going to be talking about tracking a lot more weather data. Exciting update, we are installing a weather station right here in our school garden. So that is something that you all can look forward to when you come back to class here at school. Now, a weather station is a collection of instruments grouped together outside that track and give us data about the weather and what's happening outside. Weather stations, for example, might have a thermometer shown like this, and a thermometer is measuring air temperature. A thermometer works as a closed glass tube that contains liquids such as alcohol or mercury. When air around the tube heats the liquid, the liquid expands and moves up the tube. A scale then shows what the actual temperature is. The liquid inside the thermometer changes all the time. It expands with heat and, it, and contracts with cold. And that is how a thermometer works. You would also find a rain gauge like this. A rain gauge would measure precipitation. You would also find a weather vane or a wind sock, similar to these, that would measure a wind's direction. So, Bulldog Gardeners, it's been a great time at our first garden lesson, and it's time to let you know what your first garden assignment is going to be. First, there is a Google slide assignment to complete and turn in. You can use the link provided to complete the short activity on the interactive Google slide about what you've just heard and seen in the video. It's a great idea to do this right after the video so it's fresh in your mind. Second, there is a garden journaling activity for you to do this week, and that is to observe the weather. The journal instructions, which is a Google slide, explains how to set up a page in your journal to record your weather observations. Now you have two options on how to gather your data. If you have a outdoor thermometer similar to this you're welcome to record your information with that you can also make your very own rain gauge with household items like this you need a wide mouth jar and just a ruler and sharpie to mark off and make your own rain gauge you can measure your precipitation in that way 
Or if you don't have the option of using your own outdoor instruments, you can still observe your weather outside, but you can go to the Oklahoma Mesonet website, and that is a weather data site that records that information for our region. You can find that there. Thanks, Bulldog Gardeners, for coming to the school garden with me. I've enjoyed so much our time today and can't wait to see you in the garden again soon. Have so much fun with your weather observations.